Hello everyone, I'm Chris Salazar and welcome to the first edition of this new video series, Now at Netgear, where we bring you the latest in technology news and what's happening at Netgear. Today I'm joined with this coffee break uh, by David Henry, our Senior Vice President of Connected Home. David, thank you for joining. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. Hey, cheers. Cheers. Before, before we begin, most important. Right. Let's do it. All right. So to kick off, um, tell us a little bit about Netgear, uh, sure. where we start, where we started off, where you started off here, and, and how the environment was, and where we are today, now in 2019. Sure. Well, I've been at Netgear for just about 15 years, and um, I started uh, as a product line manager for our wireless routers. And you may think back to you know 15 years ago, people were just getting Wi-Fi, they were just getting connected, and they're just for the first time having more than one computer in the home. And so wireless networking and home networking was all about. How do you just get connected? How do you get it up easily? And how do I, you know, maybe reach the room, <laughs> the second room away or the third room away? You know, over the last 15 years, so much has changed, primarily in terms of the applications that people are using their home network for. And the cool part about Netgear is, as those applications have changed, we've been able to develop new products, new wireless infrastructure to support the applications of today and tomorrow. I mean, think about it. We've gone from just getting your first laptop connected over Wi-Fi, wi right. to you know YouTube streaming, to Netflix streaming, right, to online gaming, to multiple tablets and mobile devices, and now Internet of Things and smart home all in the last 15 years, and the network has had evolved through all of that. Yeah, it's it's amazing to see how Wi-Fi networking, especially for the home, has really uh, evolved. Uh, so where do you kind of see the future of Netgear? So knowing that you know we've been pretty great at uh, evolving and kind of pivoting with our, all of our technology and flexion sure. points, Wi-Fi 6 being the theme of today and what we're going to talk about. But where's the future of, of networking, uh, future of Netgear in, in our space? Today? Yeah, I think, I think you're going to see a different Netgear in the future. I mean, I think Netgear's always been known as, uh, at least on the consumer side, you know, providing best-in-class wireless infrastructure, the wireless backbone of your home. And what that means is you probably forget about it. Yeah. When things are working well and you've got good speed, and good, it's like having a water and electricity, it's working, you don't even know. And so Netgear has become that product that's, you know, under your table or in your closet and you don't even think about it anymore. But I think what's going to change uh, is we're going to be something that's a little more front and center in your lives. Yep, definitely. Um, there's a couple things we're looking at there. One is cr developing products that we consider more lifestyle that you engage with. And also for the products that may not be uh, uh, lifestyle, we're going to develop uh, more uh, interactive, engaging products and, and features uh, on top of those products that you can engage with. Right. So it will be much more uh, in your face than we have been in the past. Oh yeah, definitely. And you bring up a pretty cool point. Um, so you talked about water and electric, and so you really don't uh, realize the, the importance of Wi-Fi uh, sure. until it's out. Just like you know, if, if you're about to go take a shower in the morning and you don't have hot water, it's like, whoa, what do I do? Um, not having Wi-Fi or having a, a Wi-Fi dead spot in your home is very similar. Uh, and, it's, and it's the same thing. So it's an it's a important thing for us to think about. It's a, almost a human right in some sort. <laughs> it is a human right. Yeah. And if, uh, if you've got to choose between water, electricity, heat, and Wi-Fi, you know, you might choose Wi-Fi for a period of time. <laughs> I'll, definitely, I'll definitely choose Wi-Fi. Um, so speaking of Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi 6, um, it's, a, yep. it's kind of a, a big term uh, in the industry, and Netgear is leading the charge there. Um, so tell us a little bit about Wi-Fi 6, what it means to the world, uh, connected home and, and also Netgear as well. Sure. Well, as I mentioned a few moments ago, you know, as the uh, technologies and applications and devices that are in customers' homes have changed over the last, you know, 15 years for me, but, you know, probably 20 plus years for the wireless networking right. overall, uh, the wireless backbone has to change as well. And way that we, the way we do that is through developing new technology and new standards. And Wi-Fi 6 is the sixth Wi-Fi standard since the inception of Wi-Fi, uh, for the most part. Um, so that's what it is. But the question is, why is, why is Wi-Fi right. 6? What does it mean? Uh, and, and the cool part is that Wi-Fi 6 is not just about providing more speed, which Wi-Fi has always been faster, faster, faster. It's about a new pain point, which is, how do I manage homes when there's hundreds of devices all connected at the same time, yeah. all competing for bandwidth? Right. Wi-Fi 6 is around capacity and efficiency. Yeah, definitely. And so here at Netcare, we've been talking a lot about uh, Wi-Fi 6 and how it makes your Wi-Fi feel young again. Uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a theme that we've been having. And also give, uh, give your Wi-Fi the VIP treatment. Um, and so those are two of the kind of recurring themes that we've had here at Netgear. 
Um, and especially with so many other devices, uh, it, it's, it's almost a, a marathon and a sprint all at the same time. And so keeping it young, keeping it fresh and giving yourself the VIB treatment when it comes to Wi-Fi is important. Definitely. I mean, absolutely. We've, we've all had a situation where, you know, many people in the home are all using a network at the same time. Uh, some people are gaming, some people are streaming. And all of a sudden we know something's, something's going wrong here. Or even probably more often, you'll be at a shopping mall or a sporting event or a coffee shop or an office, and you get a lot of people on the network and it just comes down to a crawl, right. that's because the wireless networks of today aren't designed for so many applications running at the same time. You know, you think about it, it, it used to be the average home, you know, four to five people, that's four to five laptops or four to five phones. Well, now you got IP cameras streaming to the cloud 24-7. You've got thermostats, you've got all these devices all constantly, constantly uh, sending traffic over the network Wi-Fi 6 is designed to manage that. Definitely. And now there's even microwaves that have Wi-Fi. And so, you know, you, you don't know what has Wi-Fi and that adds to the bandwidth and it adds to uh, the congestion that you can have at your home network. So that's, that's good. Yep. Um, so in Wi-Fi 6, there's a lot of questions uh, about what the difference is between Wi-Fi 5 mm -hmm. or AC um, and then Wi-Fi 6 um, or AX. And so if you can kind of clarify, what are, the, what are the key differences between the two? Yeah, I think the, the, uh, the biggest one is going to be on what I call network efficiency or, or capacity. And how do we put that into terms that most folks would understand? Um, wh what the, the fifth generation Wi-Fi, we call it uh, 11AC right. uh, Wi-Fi, is like having a, a highway with four lanes. Say the speed limit is 65, uh, but you've got four lanes. You can go 65, but when there's a lot of cars on that road, you're not even getting close to 55 or 65. Imagine you're on the 880 or the, yeah. or the 101. Oh, yeah. um, however, Wi-Fi 6 is like adding, having 16 lanes. So you still have, might have that same 65 uh, uh, speed limit, but now you've got all these free lanes opened up so everyone can go as fast as they can. So really it's around expanding the, the, the network so you get many more devices all able to hit that maximum speed. With that said, we also increase the maximum speed. So it's not just about lanes. The maximum speed goes up. And of course, we can provide broader coverage. Oh, definitely. And so uh, if we look at 4K, uh, 4K streaming uh, across, uh, there's a, a variety of different use cases. You can 4K stream and, and actually be here in San Jose and looking at something across the world or mm -hmm. be controlling something uh, of that sort. Um, and then there's also 4K in your home. So looking at 4K, um, how do you think that's going to change the landscape? And then especially there's a lot of buzz around 8K. So we were just at CES. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all the big television uh, companies were talking about 8K. So what do you kind of think? Uh, where's going to change? Do you think Wi-Fi 6 yeah. is going to be here to stay? Or? No, I think this is really exciting for us. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i thinking back to when I, when I joined Netgear 15 years ago. One of our first wireless routers we, I, I worked on was an 11A router, which was kind of a Wi-Fi yeah. 1, so to speak. Yeah. And we designed it so it could be a video streaming router but there was no such thing as video streaming. Right. <laughs> so we were building uh, technology for applications that were way out there, right? But here we are with 4K and 8K. Those, those applications consume so much bandwidth that it's going to require Wi-Fi 6. In fact, Wi-Fi 6 itself has runway for even faster versions of Wi-Fi 6. Uh -huh. So the ones we have today is not the end of it. They'll be, we'll be continue to innovate with more and more in the next few years. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And so, you know, mentioned, uh, you know, technology inflections, it's something that we, we look to pivot here at Netgear, uh, but then also creating new categories is something that uh, mm -hmm. is also important for us, especially on connected home. So we look at Orbi, mm -hmm. uh, we have the Orbi product line, Orbi Voice, uh, Nighthawk Pro Gaming. Yep. Um, and so Wi-Fi 6 is a key component of the success of uh, Nighthawk, Nighthawk Pro Gaming, and Orbi. Um, and so what's kind of the future of, of, of either those three product lines, or mm -hmm. what are you most excited about that Wi-Fi 6 is going to bring into those product lines? Yeah, I mean, I, as we mentioned, uh, this year we've already announced and released four uh, Wi-Fi 6 wireless routers, our Nighthawk line. So we're basically going to refresh our entire Nighthawk product line with Wi-Fi 6. Uh, and you'll start to see, like I said, we've got four now, we'll have more throughout the year. Um, we've announced it, we've not delivered yet. Orbi will be transitioning to Wi-Fi 6. So as all of these devices, all these um, uh, networking devices get on Wi-Fi 6, we're going to be, again, ahead because Samsung has already uh, delivered Wi-Fi 6 in their phones. Uh, there are notebooks, Lenovo's delivering notebooks with Wi-Fi 6. And what we're hearing is that pretty much all of the commercial and gaming notebooks that you'll see this spring will be Wi-Fi 6, and come this fall, it's going to be pretty much everything up and down the line. So we're going to be there just in time as all these new Wi-Fi 6 clients or devices start joining the network. So we're going to continue to push there. But like I say, it's not just about the technology. You mentioned Orbi Voice. Yep. 
for now, Orbi has been great. I mean, we talk about, you know, being behind the scenes of creating that best in class wireless infrastructure. That's what Orbi is. But with Orbi Voice, we're also a smart speaker. We're a smart speaker with amazing sound quality. So you can actually, the same device that's giving you great Wi-Fi, it's right there in your living room. It's also something you can talk to and say, play me some music, right? Um, great example. Another example would be that Nighthawk Pro Gaming, right? We talk about, you know, getting um, more of a, a interactive and engaging Netgear. Well, that means engaging with products that can really deliver a specific need. And gaming is a huge need. I mean, we all have gamers in our family. You might be a gamer. I'm not, but I got two sons who are pretty hardcore gamers. The needs they have are very different than the needs I have. So we need networking that actually can serve everyone. And Nighthawk Pro Gaming is designed to do that. Yeah, and so we're talking about uh, Nighthawk Pro Gaming, uh, you definitely don't want lag or, or something yeah. buffering to be that reason why you lose, uh, especially if you're playing out there against you know, some, some of your uh, enemies out there in the world and yes. the gaming space. Uh, and it definitely will give you that edge. Um, you know, and you talked about Orbi Voice, and I would imagine that uh, with the faster connection that you have at home, uh, it only will make the audio quality um, of the Harman Kardon speaker even that much better. Um, and I know that uh, has an impact. And so if you want the best sound, got to have the best Wi-Fi as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's key is that all of the streaming uh, services, whether it's the Netflix or the YouTubes or the, or the Pandora or the Spotify's, they've all realized that they've got to uh, deliver a good service to their customers. So if the bandwidth is not good, they will actually ramp down the sound quality to make sure it's not stuttering. Right? What that means is if you have poor Wi-Fi or poor broadband, you're not going to get the best sound quality. Right. But we do is we make sure you, that Orbi Voice gives you that best uh, wireless connection, that best connection to the Internet, so that those streaming servers will actually tune up their, right. their audio quality. Right. And I think this is where Netgear actually uh, leads the technology market. Because if you think about it, if you own a 4K TV uh, and you have, uh, if your Internet isn't that good or mm -hmm. you have some older uh, Wi-Fi networking equipment, uh, you're not going to get the best sound or the best video. Uh, but we're really, really pushing, pushing that envelope. And so we're ready for 8K. We're ready um, uh, to deliver that best sound, that best uh, video for the home, home experience. And so mm -hmm. you're putting that investment into all those other products. You've got to put that investment, too, in your, in your Wi-Fi networking. Yep, absolutely. Um, all right, so looking at the outlook uh, of Netgear, 2019 mm -hmm. to 2020, um, you know, what are you most excited about and what, what kind of uh, keeps you here and, and sure. in the morning it gets you excited about coming to work here? Besides the coffee. Besides the coffee. Yeah. Coffee no, <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of the, the most interesting and fun parts for me is that we're investing a lot more in software today. And we realize that all those, uh, you know, differentiating capabilities that are engaging for the customer, so they don't just put it away and forget about it, but they actually engage with the product, those are all software enhancements. Right? So we've, we're building out the software team. We've got a pretty strong software team already. We're keep building that out. Uh, and we're developing really in interesting and valuable services that run on top of our hardware products. Oh, that's and that's great. probably what I'm most excited about. Oh, yeah. So and we have some pretty cool uh, uh, software capabilities mm -hmm. and services for a variety of different uh, people who use the Internet. Um, if you're a mom uh, or, or a dad, you know, some kind of parent. Um, and then also the other people who are, you know, really uh, pretty mindful of security in yeah. their home. So that's, that's great uh, to hear as well. Yeah, we, we uh, announced our Netgear Armor service. And Armor is uh, our cybersecurity that runs on the wireless router. And, and the cool part about that is that, you know, we all know that if you've got a laptop, you can load antivirus software or security software on your laptop and it would be protected. But what do you load on your light bulb? What do you load on your, uh, your, your smart TV? You can't load software on those devices right. to protect them. So we realize the best way to protect all these devices in your home is at the router itself. So right there at the router, you start going to a phishing site, it'll block there on the router, and best of all, it'll give you an update on your smartphone and say, hey, we blocked this phishing attack. We box blocked this spyware attack. This is a, you know, a, a, a skeptical or, or a, you know, a scary site you shouldn't be going to uh, because you know, if we can block that at the router, and folks have no idea what's going on in their right. homes. They have no idea. We block there, right, right there on the wireless router. Yeah, that's an important point. So you think about even your device that you have. Um, you may or may not know what's going on, but what's great about Armor is it actually gives you a weekly report, and you're able to see all the other devices that you have. So your 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 kid's phone or your significant other or, or even a family member, uh, it gives you a report on their phone as well. Mm -hmm. um, these are how many uh, different phishing attempts or, or URLs that were blocked based on the device, and that's what's great. Um, because you don't know what's going on in your network. Um, you know, average family, I don't know how many uh, uh, devices they have, but I know that I have 20 plus in my home. Yep. And so being able to keep track of all of those, pre pretty uh, pretty big task. But having something automated that gives you the weekly report is, is great. Um, yep. Definitely. 
All right, sounds good. So we're going to close off uh, sure. this video series with uh, the neck your hot seat. Hot seat. Um, uh -oh. And so basically what, what we got to do is we're going to give you uh, a few different uh, terms or questions. Mm -hmm. And you got, um, within seconds, you got to come up with what your answer is on top of your mind. So It's a question you're going to ask me. Question or okay. a word. Or, or a word. word. Okay. Or a word. Um, and basically word association, uh, one or two words, what's your response to it? So it could be um, something as small as... Uh, McDonald's, love it. Or, or okay. Burger King, don't like it. But we're going to give you some other words. So, okay. you, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So, all right, the first one. So, we can go ahead and put some uh, seconds on the clock. Uh, we got oh. 30 seconds. 30 seconds to do all seven we're, of them. We're, we got 30 seconds. All right. So, we're going to rush you through. It's like family feud. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So, the first first word, and then after you answer that, I'm going to keep going on to the next few Let's words. Let's do it. Okay? So, first one, neck ear. Love it. 5G. 5G fast. Golden State Warriors. Three-time champs, going to be four. There you go. San Jose Sharks. Not a hockey dude. Oh, okay. But they just won. Um, <laughs> Maybe. They're on the next. Barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. Um, Everett and Jones. Smoke ribs. Difficult. And the last one, Wi-Fi 6. Got to have it. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> Thanks. Pleasure. Uh, for all you guys tuning in, make sure you subscribe to all of our social channels, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, across the board, and uh, stay tuned.